aim is to listen to the experiences of change agents in various universities, to discuss common as well as uncommon and particular problems, to share strategies, what works, what doesn't, and to think about what we can do together to scale up the change both in Turkey and across Europe and across the world. A charter on gender sensitive communication in and by academia and a policy document on principles and strategies of gender equality. In METU, it was expected that we should deepen and disseminate gender equality, gender sensitivity as a fundamental value. This is very, very important as a fundamental value within the university, especially within the strategic plan to integrate gender sensitivity into promotion of academic ranks, to increase the ratio of women academics in leadership positions, and to integrate gender dimension to, into research uh, and education, especially in STEM areas. Trying to create a culture of equality. That was a slogan we used a lot, was this idea of creating a culture of equality at the university and specifically trying to sort of glue gender equality to, you know, embedded in the identity of the university. Four separate themes, uh, institutional government or governance, which was of course around uh, issues of leadership and decision-making, career progression. So how are people moving through the pipeline? Are people moving up? Are people moving out? What's going on there? Work-life balance, which I think we'll be coming back to, <laughs> a, a, a recurring theme for all of us, and uh, engendering knowledge. So how could we integrate the sex slash gender dimension into classes, curriculum, research projects. So those were the four big areas. And then the plan was, you know, built from there. Having a women, uh, a female rector with gender sensitivity makes a big difference. And it was um, our experience actually at Ozean University. Ozean University has uh, established a gender equality unit and hired a gender equality expert which is me currently which is the first of its kind in turkish universities i have to say i have to self-promote shamelessly just to make sure that the plan comes to life you know the plan becomes uh, an integral part of the university culture and it becomes part of the uh, existing mechanisms at university information whether gender gender discrimination or any gender discontent was part of the decision for that employee to leave the university. With a strong basis, we were fortunate to start with a strong basis, a very strong gender and women's studies center through gender, uh, having published uh, and put into practice the first sexual harassment policy in Turkey under the leadership of our late rector, Tosun Tarzolu. Big gratitude to him for supporting that process at a historic moment. We did not have a gender action plan. And when we started this project, we realized that indeed a lot of the institutional mechanisms had been absent. And uh, so we had to learn from the experience of others. And we were so fortunate to start this after all of you. I remember in November, 2018, we held two important meetings where um, Professor Aisha Ayata and yourselves, Mary Lou, Yeshim and colleagues from other universities, particularly in Ankara and Istanbul, um, former rectors, women rectors from different universities, we came together and everyone was so incredibly generous in terms of sharing their knowledge, know-how and wisdom with us. So when we started Gearing Roles in January 2019, we were already equipped with your experience and, and wisdom and uh, we had a uh, we were really blessed to learn from you and to have your support creating a culture of equality beyond gender equality or that encompasses gender equality, which is very, very important. We also approach gender in an intersectional sense, and that's also something we're trying to do. I think in addition to that, creating a culture of solidarity and co-creation is also at the core of 
this uh, these projects and it's the kind of solidarity we have established with you all we're not competing as sister projects we're not competing as universities we're really rising together in terms of enabling institutional change learning from all of your experiences we had more tools to um, create occasions and tools for co-creation and it enabled a lot of conversation within the institution. So, and a lot of uh, people in the upper administration also participated. So people from different units of the university and at different ranks came together to listen to each other's stories and to co-create. Did we change the culture? Um, I will come back to this in uh, later, but of course, we did change the culture. We are changing the culture, not with Agera only. We're changing the culture with young academics that are coming with different values and that are globally open. You know, one of the things that becomes, you know, very clear to me as I'm listening to everyone talk is that, of course, each institution has its own culture. And that really dictates a lot in terms of how we approach strategizing change, trying to make change. Uh, and it's very interesting to listen to that. 30% of full professors in Turkey are women. That's not 50%, as I like to say. People look around, they see a lot of women, they see women in positions of power, and they don't necessarily see that there is ongoing difficulties related to gender inequality in Turkish, in academia in Turkey. One issue that we would definitely want to address as part of our gender action plan and as part of all the efforts that Ashigur has been describing is in line with the theme of this conference, raising the number of women in leadership and decision-making positions. One reason, of course, for the low number is also the in decision-making positions is a low number of women professors because as you said as you know for some positions you need to be a professor so currently the percentage of women professors at Sabancı University is around 20 percent which is below the Turkey average which was 30 percent the last time I checked might be a little different now and it, there's definitely some positive action needed here to enable that kind of change to look at breakdown by professions but also to Take, tackle this question of what Aisha Ayatar uh, raised in her first answer, this notion of how we define excellence, how we define merit, how, how do we define successful performance. This was also taken up uh, yesterday in our keynote speech and the discussion afterwards. Do we take into consideration the gendered nature of division, not, not nature, but the gendered structure of division labor and structural inequalities? And linked to that, of course, the performance of <laughs> ourselves pick one theme or concept or something that is already part and parcel of the institutional culture uh, one keyword that would do the trick and that was sustainability for us once we integrated gender equality into sustainability a lot of the things were you know, just easier. You know, we had more support, we had a platform and already working mechanism to help us out in many of the things. Just think of simple things like doing the announcements, for instance. Just as we're thinking of structural mechanisms to tackle gender inequality, how can we think of structural mechanisms to tackle these kinds of resistances? that we all have inside ourselves. I mean, a part of ourselves resists, you know, an idea that first comes saying it's not possible or it's not desirable. And yet when we put it into action, we realize that it is possible and that more people desire it than we thought uh, they would. With this growing global conversation, more and more women are emboldened. They feel heartened by the changing culture outside as well as inside and, and they speak out. And that makes a huge difference in terms of these internal conversations. <laughs> Diversity among women, um, diversity among men, um, diversity among genders, 
gender on the spectrum is much, much more difficult. I think, you know, certainly one of the very first places that we start is just in terms of how we define gender. And we had a long discussion in the project, a long and a not easy discussion about how we understood gender, how, you know, are we just talking about male and female, men and women, which is a lot of what the language boils down to, unfortunately. But what does it mean in our context to be establishing mechanisms of gender equality in the absence of a larger mechanism of, you know, equality at large? How to integrate gender with larger questions of discrimination and equality, I think, will continue to be um, a significant question for all of us in the days, weeks, and months, and perhaps years to come.